What's going on guys, reading another trade sim video, looking at another blockbuster that went down today. The Vancouver Canucks trading Antoine Roussel, Jay Beagle, Louis Erickson, all three essentially cap dumps. With their first round pick in 2021, which is actually ninth overall, second rounder 2022, and a seventh in 2023 for Oliver ekman Larson with 12% retained and Connor Garland from the Arizona Coyotes. So, like I said, an absolute blockbuster when there's eight pieces in the trade I gotta list off. So in game here, you can see Oliver Ekman Larson, 87 overall at 29 years old, making 8.25 million for seven more years. So really he's 30, uh, making it for six more years. Now Ekman Larson definitely hasn't played as good these past three seasons as he did, you know, the three seasons before that. I think his career high in points is 15, 16, where he had 55. Uh, so, you know, definitely like, you know, 14 to say 17 were his best years. Now, does a change of scenery help him potentially? Um, also too, maybe his D partner matters, but um, hopefully for Canucks sakes, you know, he bounces back the defenseman he's been before, because if not, that's a big contract. Now, I met Ekman Larson, he's a good guy, so I'm hoping for the best for him, um, but Canucks definitely taking a big risk here with that contract. Connor Garland, of course, uh, coming off of two pretty solid seasons, 39 points in each one. Neither was a full season. Uh, definitely kind of like late bloomer, tore up the QMJHL there when he was older, averaging like two points a game. Spent some time in the AHL, now looking like a solid top six forward in the NHL. You can see he's 24 years old there, 85 overall, high top six potential. So, um, Garland's definitely a nice piece. You're gonna have to ninth overall though. Garland for sure I think gives you more in the NHL, at least these next couple seasons than the ninth overall would have. So I think, you know, Benny, whoever made this call for the Canucks, is definitely in a bit of a win now mode. Uh, they don't want to miss the playoffs again. Another thing I was thinking too in regards to Ekman Larson, I know the Sedin twins just joined that front office. So, uh, maybe having played with Ekman Larson, you know, they were saying, go get him, he's worth uh, the price tag, whatever. So uh, it's basically a million bucks retained. It's 10K shy of a million on Ekman Larson. Now, the good news for the Canucks is you get three cap dumps here. The bad news is all three cap dumps only had a year left. So Erickson there, six million bucks, two more years, it's really one. Antoine Roussel here, three million dollars for two more years. Again, it's really one. You can see 76, 78, the two lowest rated players. Uh, the final one, Jay Beagle, I'm surprised he wasn't also uh, quite low rated there. It's actually got a bit of value, 79 there, uh, 3 million bucks for one more year. Then you're going to have a first, second, and seventh. We can only do five pieces. So the first this year, again, ninth overall is pretty crazy. Second next year in 2022. Arizona would have more than 50 players. Okay, so it probably won't affect. It will take back just lowest value AHL dude. Uh, gross there. I think we did that for the Gossip Spare trade we made in the earlier video. Wow, so looking at this in NHL 21, the value is actually really similar. Uh, medium trade difficulty. This might go through on both sides. Uh, let's give it a shot here. Trades rejected by the Coyotes. Uh, sent us multiple players to fill a single need. I mean, they're cap dumps. So yeah, the way the cap dump works in game, I figured it'd be tough to you know, make this trade happen. Um, again, real life, I think Arizona wins this. You get the ninth overall pick. Uh, you get rid of Ekman Larson's big long contract. Even if he goes to Vancouver and does play better, I uh, still have a lot more cap flexibility. The three cap dumps, of course, are off the books after this season. And with losing their first overall pick for nothing after like the cheating or whatever they did, uh, they're actually picking higher in the draft now. Rather than 11th, they're picking with Vancouver's 9th pick. Clearly rebuilding. They're going for right next year, but the year after that. So um, I think this trade definitely helps them rebuild. Garland, obviously you'd like to keep for the Coyotes, but um, he had a lot of interest. And apparently too, they were like shortchanging him, didn't want to pay what he wanted. I'm thinking, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw, but in this trade, the Canucks saved about 5 million in cap space for next season. And that's probably what Garland's going to make. And then after that, I think they're going to have about $14 million in cap space to get Peterson and Hughes signed. So you really got to hope you can get both those guys signed for around $7 bucks. If not, you're definitely going to have to trade somebody. Tyler Myers would be a great uh, player to trade away for the Canucks, but it's going to cost you. Holtby, I think you might be able to trade to somebody for nothing. Like, if you just want to give him away, I'm sure there's a team who needs a goalie, uh, who has a bit of cap, who would take him for like a seventh or whatever. But... Uh, very curious to see, you know, what other moves Jim Benning's going to make. So after that trade, guys, you look what the Canucks roster might look like. I've got Miller, Peterson, Besser still as the first line. Garland on the second line, they have Horvat and Hoglander. Pearson's on the third line with Dickinson, who I put the trade through for. And Jimmy VC. VC spot could also be for the Coles if he comes over. Um, McEwen there, Boyd and Ma on the fourth line. Defensively, I've got Ekman Larson on the top pair with Quinn Hughes. I feel like if you're making this big trade for him, you're paying all that money. Probably put him on the top pair. He's better than Myers for sure, at least in my opinion. Schmidt there, they might trade away. I've got him in a second. Uh, the young guys, Olavi and Rathbone on the bottom pair. Of course, Demko's your starter. Holpe backing him up. Again, they can trade Holpe for basically anything without paying somebody to take his contract. I think that'd be a plus and obviously giving them more cap flexibility. I think DiPietro should be good enough 
to be a backup. Give you guys a look here at what Ekman Larson looks like as a member of the Vancouver Canucks. So there you go, all Ekman Larson number 23 on the Vancouver Canucks. Definitely a bit weird, honestly, seeing that he's been with Arizona his entire career. And like I mentioned too, it's the Deans. I remember, I think their final game was against Arizona. Ekman Larson, you know, is one of the first guys congratulating them. Connor Garland here probably doesn't have a great game face. I'm just going to guess. Uh, <laughs> That looks nothing like Connor Garland, yeah. Number 83, uh, Connor Garland. Definitely, you know, a shorter guy, like, what is he, 5'8 or something? But, like I said, skilled forward. Should fit in while they're in the top six. Uh, so now we'll try this trade from the Coyotes' perspective and see what happens. So like I was saying, guys, we're not going to try this trade from the Coyotes' perspective. We've got a million dollars retained on Ekman Larson. The Canucks are actually interested in Garland. Their second round picks on the block, but none of the cap dumps, surprisingly. So, uh, Coyotes rejected. We'll see if the Canucks also reject this. And they do, okay. So... Um, in game, it's a pretty fair trade, I guess, because both teams rejected. Um, in real life, like I said, I think it was a pretty fair trade, but I would give the edge to the Coyotes just because a lot less risk involved with their trade. The cap dumps are done in a year. They get the ninth overall pick to help rebuild around. Uh, it's clear the direction they're going. They're rebuilding where the Canucks, I think, um, are trying to, you know, win now and go for it. And with Ekman Larson's recent play and the big cap hit, quite a big risk. And uh, unless they get the Stanley Cup or something, it may not be worth the reward. And after the trade, guys, should update a look at the Coyotes roster again. I think they're clearly in a rebuild. So top six there, you got Keller, Schmaltz, Kessel, Fisher, Dvorak, and Hayton. After that, the bottom six, Kraus, Larson, Hunt. I've actually got the three Canuck cap dumps all in the fourth line. Erickson, Beagle, Roussel. Defensively, you got Chikrin, Soderstrom is my guess for the top pair. Uh, Labushkin and Gossespierre, Capobianco, Osterly, um, all three pending UFAs I've got not signing, so Jarmelson, Demers, and Goligoski. In terms of the goaltending, Kemper should be back as a starter unless they trade him. Ranta most likely going somewhere in free agency. They traded Aiden Hill. Yeah, Coyotes <laughs> definitely I don't think are going to be a playoff team. Uh, clearly, you know, in a rebuild, but they got a lot of picks, so uh, the future should be good for the Coyotes. The thing is, if you're a fan of that team, uh, you're going to have to wait, you know, even longer for them to be a true contender. Now, that's it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, draft's going to start by the time you're watching this, probably, you know, half an hour or so. Again, I'm going to be streaming it on YouTube. Make sure to check that out. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button. Let me know in the comment section which team you think won the trade. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.